Terror core, speed core, sort of nice, you're getting, like, basically getting your weirdos on. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I don't know how it began because <laughs> it it's just pure luck. I was I was living with my mum at the time. My dad had not long passed away. Uh, my mum was moving away, uh, and I needed somewhere to store my sound system because I used to keep it in the in the shed. Um, so I needed somewhere to store my sound system. I was looking for storage, but I also wanted to do a party around here because. If you're from around here, you'll know there's nothing around here. It's, it, there's fuck all. It's, you know, the only thing to do around here is, well, drugs, really, unfortunately. Or if you've got some escapism, music, what we found. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to, I needed storage from the sound system. Um, so I was looking around. Didn't really find anywhere, won't find it anywhere suitable. Got told about this place. I knew of this place because I actually worked down here when I was 16, a steel fabrication place up there uh, when I left school. So, came down, didn't think I was going to get, well, you know, didn't think I was going to get anywhere. Got the landlord's number, got in contact with the landlord, <clears throat> came down, met him. Now, this the guy's called Ken. Uh, at that time, he was, he was in his 70s, looked like something off a nutty professor, very well spoken. As soon as I saw him, I was like, I've got no chance here, I've got no chance. Um, approached him, just chatting shit with him basically. Yeah, this is what I want to do, I need storage for my sound system. Oh, sound system, that, that, that doesn't take a lot of space, does it? And I was like, well, yeah, it's shown him a picture. Of like, just, at that time it was a load of W bins, so it was nothing like what we've got now. And for a 70 year old guy to say, oh that's all that rave stuff isn't it? I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh someone wanted to rent one of my bigger units a few years ago for a rave, uh, but they never came back with the cash. And I was like, oh what, what, was you up for it then? He's like, yeah, yeah, I was totally up for it, but we just never came through with the money. I was like, back. Right, this is this is what I want to do. This was built purely on boredom, you know. There was, there was nothing to do, so we was like, "Fuck it, I'll do it myself." And it was like, "Yeah, you know." And this is what it's became because, let's be honest, no one else is going to do it for you. You know, you can sit there behind your keyboards, moan, "Is fuck all to do? Is nothing to do?" You know, it's shit round here. Yeah, it probably is shit round where you live. So do fucking something about it, you know what I mean? Do something. And yeah, you're going to get knocked down and you're going to get the police or whatever. No, you can't do it. Just fight. Fight for your right to party.
apologies for swearing, I'm a Londoner, I'm getting back to Shane. He's, he's, I must have said to him, are you sure this is the right place? And, and the main reason was sound. It, you can't annoy anybody where you are there. <laughs> and um, I said, you might have to, uh, or it, between conversations, we have conversations. And someone suggested that uh, they could soundproof the windows and things. Uh, the thing horrifies me. I can't imagine being locked in a room like that with, with blaring music. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's just not my scene. As soon as I walked in, bang, perfect. Low ceilings, just dirty, grimy, pipes running through the walls, girders. It, it was horrible. I was like, yes, this is what I want. And the. Uh, He's like, yeah, pay me a month up front. Give, uh, I paid him a month. He says, right, there's a load of soundproofing around the back. Loads of like steel foaming, like steel sheets with foam in the middle. He's like, do all the windows, do what you can to make it as quiet as possible. So that's what we did. Sealed all the windows up and then bang. It was Shane's attitude to it. He was so confident in it. Raves I'm interested in. It's you getting on yourself and becoming bigger and more secure. Most of it's just a stop in your life, you know. That's um, that uh, it's it's up to you now how big you become. You could next thing you can end up with a huge emporium or something like that, doing the same thing. Or you can stay small, and I don't want yachts. I don't want. I had, a, I had my own plane with English Electric, um, and went all over. Not mine, but two pilots, sixteen seats, and so on, and went all over the world, advertising English Electric. <laughs> I worked down here when I was 16, okay. but then obviously I'm 32, yeah. going back seven years. So. But before this, we was doing a lot of free parties, um, doing like parties in London and stuff, squat parties. I used to do nights, a night called Rigor Mortis. I was in Nottingham uh, in the Blueprint, but then obviously Blueprint closed, unfortunately. Um, so we was a bit lost. Yeah, there's no venues around really. And the venues that we approached to do nights in, they they went up for it, you know. And the venues that would let you do them sort of nights weren't they weren't up for letting you bring your own sound system in there, um, which is understandable, you know. People have got licenses to look after, you know, reputations. People don't want sound complaints. It's you know, which is understandable. So it, it was hard. It was hard. So you know, we we just looked. Obviously, we're doing free parties as well, but you know, free parties are good, but there's a lot of risk there, seizures and stuff like that, mm. as we know. I had a five and a half month seizure, not not good, cost me two and a half grand to get everything back. Um, so yeah, it's um, it, it's a big risk, and it's hard to find underground venues um, and a venue just in general that is letting you, that is willing to let you do these sort of nights. So, so, so. and uh, around the community, like. Has it, has it been an uphill battle? Have you been massive, struggling? Massive, so obvious. Like licensing? And yeah, base, well, when we first, obviously when we first came here, it was illegal. Word of mouth, 
100% illegal parties for a year. We used to used to be a security guard down there. We used to pay him off to turn a blind eye and chuck him 20 quid. There's a couple of businesses, I'll not name them, um, they know who they are. There's a couple of businesses on this industrial estate. Um, they hate us. They, you know, they hate us. But it's not just the fact they hate us, it's the fact anything to do in these buildings, it's just a long battle with the landlord going back to the 70s regarding land and all that nonsense. Forward here, when we was actually battling for the licence with the council, they were the ones objecting against us. It wasn't the members of the public, it was the businesses battling against us, um, you know, for whatever reason, you know, just the standard, you know, drugs, violence, you know, fire risks, all the, all the rest of it. But we fought through it and we got it because, you know, at the end of the day, we're not doing anything wrong, are we? So. passionate about it but I feel have I got the strength to carry on with it you know I've pumped so much into it and it's just kind of be arsed you know what I mean but on the long run I still want to party and there's nowhere else to party around what here. What do you so. think the, the sort of long term unit goers and people that are really established the night and, and love the night how, how do you think they're gonna feel if it's it's not running anymore? Ah, oh, they'll be gutted, won't they? You know, everyone will be gutted. You know, I'll be gutted. But you know, you have to you have to move on. We had a good run. You know, I only set out to do one party, <laughs> just one. I didn't even think I was gonna get away with that. And I've been here seven years. You know, and it's just, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts because that first party, it was like right. I was adamant I was gonna get shut down. I was going to get shut down, that was it, and then, you know, got away with it, and then got away with another one, and another one, and another one, got caught after a year, and then I was like, right, I have a face, and they'll say, right, yeah, I'm going to prison, because for some strange reason, the, uh, the police thought we was making lots and lots of money down here, obviously we're not, <laughs> um, so yeah, we... Um, they gave us the chance to go for the license, so that's what we did. And do, do, the, do the authorities come down and check it out now? Still, very, know. very rare. Very rare they do. But when they do, the more, not so much. They're just interested. And then as we got to know them, and we were going through the license, 
surprisingly, they just wanted to help. You know, as long as you're doing it correctly and safely, they'll let you do it. Now, it, it's weird really because coming from like free party kind of background and stuff, you know, it's all like, fuck the police, fuck the police. But like, the police are actually there to help you, believe it or not. Now, if you're doing it the way they want you to do it, then you can actually get away with a lot more doing it legally than you can illegally, believe it or not. So, you know, and the cats are as well, absolutely fucking amazing, you know. They just want to help you. I don't know, I don't, they must like me, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know, I, but, you know, they've just been amazing from the start, you know, they just nothing but help me out, you know, if, I've, if I'm struggling with something or I'm not sure on something, they're like, oh no, you need to do it like this, you know, or you can do it like that, I'm like, oh, well, right. I want to, you know, you're a copper. You don't you don't help people like me, but you are. So respect. Like, so. so what happened first? Were you going to the council for a meeting or? Yeah, that, that <laughs> yeah that that was a challenge. Now put the license in. Obviously, then you have to uh, you have to go for a council meeting. So you have to submit your plan to a panel of uh, councillors. Now. I went in with a, a guy called Bailey, a friend. <clears throat> he's, he's quite knowledgeable. I was shitting it. I was absolutely shitting it. I lied. Fucking no way we're getting away with this. Anyway, I had to convince a panel of old age pensioners, councillors, that having raves were a good thing for the community. I lied. It's, just, it's not going to happen. I had a shirt on, tried to make myself look responsible and respectable and that. Anyway. <clears throat> There was the main, I can't remember his name, he was the main counsellor. He, he wasn't having any of it. And I knew if I said the word rave, that was it, was fucked. Because what comes with rave? Drugs, straight away, you know. I couldn't say the word rave. Under no circumstances I could say the word rave. I couldn't say it. And he was trying to get the word rave out of my mouth so bad. And I was like, no, no, it's expressive arts, you know. We're just having parties, you know. You know, we just want to play music and dance, you know, do artwork, you know. We sometimes have poetry nights and shit like that, you know. We were just pushing it, just just not on a rave basis at all. It, you know, he is not stupid, he knew exactly what we was doing. Um, and for like two hours we battled that out, you know. I was sweating and I was like, oh God, what the fuck. We walked out of there and I was like, fucking no chance and we had obviously we had two of the local businesses you know they're multi-million pound businesses and they were there objecting against us saying they didn't want us there and, you know you've got these cats they're going to be on their side straight away they're probably paying them off anyway and we was like Fuck, we're not getting away with this we are not getting away with this and after that we have a month review uh, you have to submit it to the newspaper local newspaper see if you get any objections off the like the public we didn't get any objections from that which was good um and then after a month review we got called back into the council office and then uh sat down same councillor you know I, I was just i was just waiting for him to say uh you know no you're not having it they were like my best friend ah shane please sit down yes uh, yes well i can't see there being any problems granting you your premises license from uh, nine till six in the morning for your for your venue i was like what? <laughs> he's like, yep, yeah, got no problems, we'll sign this paperwork off now, and then obviously he's of a panel. Any objections? Any objections? No, no, no objections, signed it, done. I was like, what the fuck? So I <laughs> walked out, a few days later, got my licence through the post, to pay £180 a year for my licence renewal, and I can legally do this down here. Wow. I pay £180, and I've got a licence, and I can have raves in here as loud as I want and there's no problem.
yeah, m massively proud of what it's become. And if I was to walk away, I'd walk away with my, my head up high, but, you know, it's, I don't know, I don't know if I'd do one last party though. I think, you know, if they say, right, you've got three months, six months to go. I just carry on as normal, but I don't know if I do one last big fucking party because I know if I do one last big party down here, but these these buildings stay empty for another year. I know I'll be snapping that lock off and coming in and doing another party because I'll get bored, I'll get itchy feet, I'm like fuck it, it's sat there empty, fuck it, it's getting parted again. So I think I'll just I'll carry on as normal and just you know just let it you know just it just stops you know because I think it's a bit cliche or last ever party in the unit it's that and nah, just it, it'll just stop you know the people who the people that have been down to the unit that have parted in here they'll know the good times that have been had in here and the people who haven't well we can just imagine yeah if it's not underground what's the point you know it's all about supporting the underground scene you know, if it's not underground, then, you know, you might as well be just being some fucking wine bar, strutting around a handbag to some funky house, you know. Music needs to stay hard and dirty and underground. And venues need to be underground and dirty. You don't want to be coming in here with your fucking nice clean clothes on. You need you need to be leaving here dirtier than fucking what, when you was when you came in, you know. It's all about dirty underground rave. That is what it's about. And unfortunately, there's a lack of that in the fucking UK. You know, other countries get it. In Europe, they get that. But in the UK, we don't. We're quite polished, and you know, is it, there's a small community in the in the UK that get that. They want dirtiness. They want underground fucking parties. But you know, and the few and far between. So it's about time people fucking woke up and people did something about it and fucking got more of these places. Get dirty. Get underground. You know, get 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 raw. Get back to the roots because that's what it's about. You know, it's fuck this clean shit. It's so bad. <laughs> Thank you.